All right. I've had a couple of people ask me about how I use track disabling in Cubase in my sort of orchestral template in order to make it less of a resource load. And this is my cat who wants to join us. Um, so I've seen a lot of like there's sort of the two main schools of templates that I've seen where you have all your stuff loaded. Um, and it gives you really, really quick, easy access to everything, but it can really be a drain on your system. Then there's sort of the other um, camp, which is load as you go, which is way easier on your system because you're only loading what you need. All the contact libraries and stuff are only the ones you need. But sometimes then it can be really disorganized. At least I've found it for me. So I kind of use a hybrid approach that I haven't seen too many people use, and it really, really works well for me. Um, I want to make this a little bit bigger here so you can see. Um, so I have my tracks rolled up like this, right? So I have my meta tracks, which are my tempo markings, time signatures, blah, blah. And then here's all my um, instrument tracks. And these are all just in folders, color-coded, you know, you know, teals for vocals, winds are blue, strings are purple, um, oranges are brass. And then if I go inside, like, um, my winds... I have Cinewinds folder and a, an Albion folder, but then I have all my different wins here. And you can see here, like, you know, like all of these, like the ensemble is not grayed out. So this means it's active, it's actively loaded. So I can play this one, um, but my piccolo track and flute and everything else is not. So pressing my keys does nothing. Um, so they're still here and they still have all the color information. They're in the right folders. They still have all the routing information because you can see down here I have the group vocal, group wins tracks. So all my group tracks, everything is routed um, appropriately, but they're just disabled. Um, same with, you know, so like I can look at my strings, same things. Here's my cine strings and I have the um, uh, ensemble track loaded. Um, now, if I want to, what I can do is, is oh yeah, the other nice thing is if I bring up the mixer view, right, you can see that it only shows the um, the enabled tracks, the ones that are currently um, actively loaded. So that's kind of a really, really nice. And, and I have a control surface down here. I have the um, Avid Artist Mix Series, and it only shows you know the group tracks and the three here the the strings the winds strings and brass ensemble tracks so that's kind of what i used to get me started and then you have the group tracks and a couple of effects tracks um so this is nice because my template really doesn't have to load that much when i first bring it up so it really comes quick um so this is a really nice compact view because it leaves things not cluttered for me and then as i'm composing Say I'm like, okay, now I really do want, you know, my violin one. So what I do here is I go to enable track. Um, I also have a key command set up for this. So if I want, you know, violin two, I can just hit my key command on my mixer here. Um, sometimes you do have to connect your, your MIDI. But the nice thing is now if I look at my mixer, now it's expanded to my violins ones and twos. And the nice thing is it's already routed to my group strings track um, because I haven't, like it's already in there. I don't have to really touch anything, right? Like I can, like I can, I can start work right away on it. So it loaded the contact library only when I enabled the track. Um, you know, again, the nice part, too, is say I bring up, I don't know, um, uh, an H delay, whatever, like some sort of effect. It doesn't really matter. And then say I decide, oh, I don't really, you're making this really hard, cat. I didn't really need that violin, too. So I can just go and use my key command and disable it again. And now it unloads it for memory. So my contact library is on, but it keeps all those changes saved. It also keeps all like my expression maps are already automatically loaded in. So I don't have to do anything. All my, if I've changed any, tweaked any settings in the contact library itself, um, if I bring up the contact library, I have changed it, um, you know, like my expression maps do funny thing, like, you know, I have, whoops, um, I've changed the mappings around, this kind of thing. That's all saved in 
uh, in the track even though it's disabled. So that's really nice because I don't have to set it up each time, but it keeps the memory load very, very low and only to what I'm using. Um, and, like, and, you know, you can have MIDI information on the track that's disabled. It doesn't matter. Uh, so that's like, so that's kind of how I, I set up my templates um, is so that I can do this sort of thing. And it, it seems to be really fast for me where I'm like, okay, well, I now need, you know, oboe, flute, and bassoon. I just select them, use my hotkey. It enables the tracks. So it's loading up the contact libraries and now they're ready to go. And again, now is the only time you'll see them in the mixer view. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Uh, I know it's a little slower, like it's easier to get going quicker. It's a little slower than you can't just instantly grab and start working with a, uh, a patch. But I found that it really, really helps things out for me to get them fast, easy, accessible, and uh, organized. Yeah, not having to remember how to do routing. Um, or, you know, you can have your, your plugins that you normally use on there and they're all disabled so it's not trashing your resources and your system. Um, so I found this to be a really, really efficient way. I only use a single tower. It's a beefy tower uh, machine, but I'm not using any of the, like, uh, master-slave configuration or anything like that. It's just nice and simple and it allows me to do pretty darn efficient work uh, in a, you know, in this single environment. So I hope that was useful. Um, I think there are some ways to do it in Logic, Digital Performer, and stuff like that, but I've not used those, so you'll have to search on your own. But this works for me in Cubase. All right.